Hello, everybody. I'm checking in for our daily devotional time. Um, hope uh, there's some out there that will be watching. Um, if you are there, give me a hello. Hey, Judy. <laughs> You usually wait, and I thank you for that, Fran. Good morning to you guys. Um, hope everybody's doing all right. And um, I hope you guys are enjoying these. And um, just uh, one of my favorite parts of the Passion Week I'm going to share today. Good morning to each one of you, Linda, Marie, Beth. Appreciate you guys checking in. Um, something that we used to do as a kid I want to talk about we need to do more often I'm reminded of that now in this age of self and just being more conscious of what our duties and responsibility more, good morning Mary Lou good to see you as well that you're watching uh, waving at you guys hello 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 <laughs> Hey, Erica. Uh, Angie, good to see you as well. Um, this morning, I wanted to continue my um, devotions on the line of the days leading up to the crucifixion. And of course, several days later when Jesus would rise from the grave. And today, I want to talk a little bit about service and servanthood. Uh, one of the reasons Jesus walked the earth for the number of years he walked for three years. And uh, he wanted to set an example for all of us to follow. And um, of course, we want to live a life that's pleasing to God. And we don't want to participate in activities that uh, are, I wouldn't so much call it as, as necessary. I really want to look at it as a way of, of keeping us from enjoying the presence of God and his ability to help us through life. And so obviously we want to stay away from sinful behavior as the Bible would call it. But the Bible says for him that knows to do good and does not do it, that's also sin. That's sin that we call it the sin of omission. Now we in the church talk a lot about sins of commission, committing sins, acts of transgressions against God. But a lot of times we don't focus on the sins of omission those things that God has instructed us to do that we don't do. And so it's not a list of don'ts. It's also a list of do's. And I think if we could participate in the activity of God, we would see God helping us in maybe some of those other areas. I'm going to be talking to you from John chapter 13 this morning. And uh, I could I preach sermons on this topic and be careful not to be on here speaking too long today, but let me just go ahead and read the scripture and then set it up and share some some truths I think we need to understand that Jesus is again reflecting to us through this. Um, it says, before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth and now he loved them to the very end. And it was time for supper and the devil already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. And Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, you are not going to wash my feet. And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. Peter continued to protest. You will never, ever wash my feet. And Jesus replied to him, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. And Simon Peter exclaimed at this point, then wash my hands, my head as well. Lord, not just my feet. And Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for his feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you, for Jesus knew who would betray him. 
This is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. And after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I'm doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I've given you this example to follow as I have done to you. I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now you know these things, God will bless you if you do them. So what we see here is is Jesus setting these guys up and they're not ready for it. You know, they've, they've come to, you gotta remember, he's, he's entered into Jerusalem with great fanfare, celebration. He's taught in the temple. The, the leaders are, even though they're plotting against them, they're, they're even saying this guy's pretty smart. And so there's this feeling that, this almost euphoric feeling that we're about to take control. We're about to be in charge here. And there was even conversation amongst the disciples. I got to believe that that's what was going on even in the moments leading up to this, that the disciples were jockeying for position. Who's going to be you know, the next in command, who's going to be the second, who's going to, who's going to, even at one point in the scripture, uh, John's mom comes to, uh, Jesus and said, can my son sit at your right hand? Um, and they, (laughs) they were looking for position. They were still locked into the earthly way of, um, you know, leadership control being in charge. And in the midst of all of this conversation going on, Jesus, I think, slips away unnoticed and takes off his outer garment and puts on a servant's robe. And I've talked about this at church quite often. The lowest person in the pecking order in a household was the servant whose job it was to wash the feet. Back in those days, obviously, there were no paved roads. They had to walk across a lot of dirt pass and there's a lot of animals on the road so there was obviously a lot of things there that your feet could come into contact with they didn't wear uh, a lot of open you know closed footed shoes there was a lot of sandals a lot of things could get on your feet and so when a person came into the house uh, the, the lowest servant would be in charge of going around and washing the feet of all those that had arrived at the home for the dinner it was, a, it, was a, it was a very nasty job. I know some of you can't stand feet. And uh, the thought of washing someone's feet probably makes you think, oh, I can't believe anybody had to do that. But that's, that was part of the, the culture of that day. And Jesus goes and he begins to wash their feet. And of course, Peter is, is, is offended by it. Um, now, I, I know maybe he's trying to make it look like he's, oh, you're my... You're my Lord. I, you should, I should be washing your feet. You shouldn't be washing mine. But Jesus was giving them the example that if you're going to be a, a leader in my kingdom, if you're going to be a, a leader that steps up and does work of the kingdom, you're going to have to become a servant. You're going to have to help those that don't necessarily deserve your help. Remember, in this scripture, it says Judas had already made up his mind that he was going to that he was going to betray Jesus. Judas had already made the decision that he was going to turn Jesus over to the temple guards. He's already arranged it. The, 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 you know, the time maybe hadn't been set, but he had already made the decision to do this. And Jesus washed his feet. Jesus washed Peter's feet, even though Peter didn't want him to. He did it anyway. And in that same period of time, he, he, he tells Peter, you're going to betray me. And sure enough, you know, I preached about that on Sunday. Peter did just that. Of the 12, all of them, except one, ran away. We know John was at the foot of the cross, standing beside Mary, Jesus' mother. And so what we see here is these men who don't realize what was about to take place. Jesus was washing their feet, knowing full well that all but one would leave him and and not look back and just run away in terror. And he did it anyway. 
before they failed, he washed their feet. How does that relate to you and I today? I would tell you that as a Christian, our first call, if we are a believer in Jesus Christ, our first call is to serve, not to be served, is to help, not to point a finger at someone and accuse them or tell them, you need to get right. Yes, we want to see them get right. Yes, we want to see people find Jesus. But in a lot of ways, that only happens when they see that love of Jesus that we are able to express to others. And one of the things, you know, that, that I've seen in church, not all the time, you know, there's good people in church. You know, that some have stayed away from church because they've been hurt by church. And I can appreciate that. But I, my experience, and I can only speak from my experience, is uh, I have run into some pretty tough people in church, but I've run into so many wonderful people in church. And I choose to to remember those good people that have invested in my life. But one of the things I can remember at times, even in a good church, that if somebody came in a little different or someone that wasn't as reputable, um, sometimes in churches, they, they, they're they not uh, embraced. They're not helped. And sometimes they're scorned. And Jesus is saying, we got to help those that are, you know, separated, those that are, you know, low on the totem pole. We got to encourage those that may be not doing the right thing, but somehow, some way, let them see the love. And that love comes through just service. I'm so proud of my church here. We serve the community. We have many benevolence ministries we do. We have a ministry that uh, started several years ago called Laundry of Love, where we have people at our church once a month go to a local laundromat and they just pay for people's laundry. Janice Marlowe has been so faithful to that ministry. I so appreciate her. Her faithfulness it hasn't been easy. She's had her own physical struggles, but she's maintained, and there's been others that have partnered with her uh, throughout the years. And we, they just go and they, they serve people. They, they help them with their laundry. And there have been many people that lives have been touched and changed by that. We have a ministry called um, Morning Manna, which uh, Beth Alcott had a great vision for years ago. And she stayed faithful to it, even though at times it didn't look like anybody was participating, anybody were encouraged by it. It's a ministry where we pack breakfast bags for kids in our community for weekend breakfast, because a lot of these kids in our community, when they're not in school, don't get square meals. So we pack these bags and we give some to the local elementary school. We have a food pantry called Open Hearts, Open Hands. And they we, we hand out groceries you know, once a week on Thursdays and we see people coming in that they don't attend our church, people that we wash laundry for, they don't attend our church, the people that we give breakfast bags to, they don't necessarily attend our church. But we reach out to the community, we help. We we have sowing seeds, which we help to feed homeless in our community and we provide clothes and other uh, essentials that um, help people in rough places. And not all these people are part of the church. Now, through the extension of those ministries, through service, we have won people to the Lord, but our expectation is you got. We're going to give you this, but you're going to give us something in return. No, the person that washes someone's feet doesn't expect something in return. That's just the job they do. Jesus did that as an example. He gave His life for you and I, and so here He is showing us an example of how we can give our lives for others. Jesus died for us so that we won't have to die in our separation from God. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. What He's asking for the people of the church is to live your life as a sacrifice to him. Give uh, God an opportunity to work not only in you, but through you. And that's what this example is. Someone asked me on here, do we still do foot washing? Yes, we do. Probably not as often as we should, but I have participated in foot washings over the years. One one, one in particular I wanna share with you um, as I try to bring this to a close. This is one area that I, if, if we could change our world, this is how we change our world. We serve our world without any expectation, and then let God work through the service, and then lives are changed. I've seen that evidence in my own local uh, church here that I've been a part of for 13 years. It has helped to change our church. And the truth is, it's changed us. It's made us better. It's improved our walk with God. Because God's looking to deposit himself into people that are willing to invest in others, serve others. Several years ago, I uh, uh, was a part of a youth ministry in Great Bridge. Uh, it's Kingdom Life Ministries now. Uh, 
worked under a wonderful couple, Randy and Kathy Wood, and just, we had a great opportunity to do great work there, and, and they're still doing great work, I, I, I know. But um, at a youth group, and it had grown uh, really quickly, God had blessed us, and we were so thankful for that. But you know, when growth comes, sometimes growing pains happen, and we got to a place where some of our youth were at each other. They were just finding fault with one another, and and pulling each other down. And it was just very discouraging to me as a pastor to see people that I was trying to help be so hateful with one another. And so I decided, it was right before Easter, I believe, I had a Saturday night service and I just came to the service and I was dressed as a normal person and I opened up the service, a normal person. I was dressed as I normally was. But then I, I, I stripped away my, my outward shirt and had an undershirt on and, and stripped down to just my shorts and, and my T-shirt. And I had bowls across the stage. And I, I challenged each one of them. I said, some of you, the Lord wants to work in your life, but there's obstacles in the way. You've been having a hard time with some of the people in this group. You've been saying bad things about them. You've been tearing each other down and it's not pleasing to God. And then I brought a couple of my leaders up on the stage. I said, my, 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 my duty and responsibility is to serve these that are serving me or helping me in this ministry. And so I washed several feet. I've done it also here at the church one time before. And uh, what happened in that service was incredible because some of these that were having fault with one another found one another and began to wash feet. They began to weep and say they were sorry and apologize to one another. It was a beautiful service that illustrated the very point that we need to serve each other. We need to serve those that are going to hurt us. We need to serve those that may betray us. We need to serve those that don't care about us sometimes. In order to do the work of the kingdom, we must serve. Jesus said, serve one another. And as often as you do this, you are showing the world my love. And so I just encourage each one of you today, in this moment in time where we have maybe more opportunity to think in terms of how we're living out our lives. I just got one question for you. How's your service? Are you serving others? Are you praying for others? Are you helping others? Even those that maybe sometimes don't seem like they deserve help. Because as you do this activity, as you share your faith with those that you serve, two things are happening. One is God deposits himself in you because when you pour out for God, he pours back into you. The more I give for God, the more God gives back to me. Secondly, you're making God visible, an invisible God visible to a world that desperately needs him. That's how we serve one another sharing our faith that truly expresses the love of God for a lost and dying world. That is the call of every believer. And I can tell you right now that as you do those things, it will change you and it will change people that you come in contact with. So today I just tell you, find some way to serve. You say, well, I'm, I'm locked in. I can't go nowhere. I've already stated there are several ways you can do that. Encourage someone today. Just call somebody, just randomly out of the blue. Just think about it, first of all. Just be prayerful. God may, be, may put you, may put someone on your heart that desperately needs an encouraging word today. Make an investment. You know, I encourage you, I, you know, I'm not one that sort of harps on this, but we're, we're continuing to do these benevolent works. We got one called a lady named Judy Fowler, who's really grown a lot. She watches this a lot. Judy's uh, doing a wonderful ministry, Rescue Breasts, where she's helping to put necessary um, uh, first aid kits into homes and uh, people's lives that can help them. She's trying to bring self-awareness. We need self-awareness about uh, better ways to be healthy. So these are areas. So give, give, give in some capacity. Pray for these ministries. Pray for these ministries that God would, would help these ministries um, move forward. Make an investment. Give. Just give. You want to give to our church? You can give to our church. We have a minister here that we've also, that has grown out and we've connected to a nonprofit called uh, City of Refuge Recovery Center. We are making an investment in folks in our community. Hopewell has been overrun by drug addiction. It's happened over the course of time. And we're, we, you know, how many know that it's easy to curse the dark? That's the easiest thing we can do. Well, this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this needs to be better. And sit around and complain about everything. Make an investment. Turn on a light. That gets rid of darkness. 
Just turn on a light. You see, this light keeps, it's giving me a great illustration, by the way, but this light on my computer keeps going off and it makes my, my face grow darker. But as soon as the light comes up, it brightens up. So make an investment in some type. You know, you can give to City of Refuge Recovery Center. Go to City of Refuge Hopewell. Dot net, I believe it is, and uh, you can make an make an investment there. And I might share some about that at some point in the in the future. But make an investment, do something, pray for somebody, and make an investment. And as you do this, you're, you're literally washing someone's feet. It may not do it in the physical, but you're doing something. You're becoming a servant, and that is what God calls us to be. I tell you what, if we serve one another, we'll all be lifted up. Remember. A rising tide raises all boats. We can all move up to a better place. So, yeah, I mean, we've got differences and we can discuss those. But Jesus, remember, Jesus' harshest criticisms came to the people that were supposed to be representing God. Let us be a church. Let us be a church. Let us be a community of believers that serves one another and serves the world so that they may see Jesus in our lives. I appreciate each of you today for checking in. I hope this has encouraged you and it challenged you. It's I want to encourage you, but I want to challenge you too. Don't just get in an easy seat and say, well, I'm saved and I'm cool. No. When God saves you, he calls you and he's calling all of us today to fight in a spiritual warfare where many are being lost daily. We can't see them on a on a, a COVID page, but they're being lost daily. And we can make a difference. We can change lives if we'll bind together with one another, serve one another, love one another, and be a help and move into a better place. Father God, I'm so thankful for your grace and mercy and love. Thankful that you have called us as servants. You have called us, Lord, to, to be a part of the solution Lord, help us and forgive us for always pointing out the problems in this world that we live in. Father, give us the capacity to see that you have given us the solution. It is the love of Christ expressed through serving one another that we can make a difference. We pray for those that are serving even now within our hospitals and with medical facilities, the doctors, the nurses, the medical assistants, the the respiratory therapists, all these that are working diligently for people's health. Help us as the body of Christ to help bring spiritual health to our society today. Thank you for your grace and mercy and love. Bless us, God, and equip us to be your servants, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for showing up today. Yeah, Carol, I saw that. The motto is, it's better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Amen. <laughs> uh, I appreciate each of you for checking in. I'll be on tomorrow evening. I, I know that typically I do them daily, but when I, I don't, I don't want to overdo this thing, so I will do a Bible study tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. So check in uh, at 7 p.m. tomorrow, and I'll have a Bible study that will be relating again to this this week uh, of where we remember the last few days of Jesus before his crucifixion, and then we celebrate his resurrection on Sunday. I appreciate all of you coming. Have a blessed day. I pray God would just grant you his peace, his strength, and his grace in all that you do. And one last thing, find somebody to serve. God bless you and have a great day.